Um, talk about the mushroom trip and where we were and evidently not there anymore. My favorite thing you said, my favorite thing you said after, well, I know it's still there, but my favorite thing you, yes, sa- you said after the mushroom trip is you go, <laughs> you go, was that true? Did that really happen or, yeah. or were we just two idiots on mushrooms? And I go, it was both. Yeah. <laughs> that really did happen. So we, and I'm going to do like a little something on my Instagram about not this part. This was just before the podcast. But yeah, so we went someplace and we had mushrooms and it was like, it was my first time really taking mushrooms in, especially in my first time taking it in the raw. And it was my first time really having like a, a, an adequate dose that would bring certain things out. So, you know, I had heard that we need to have it on an empty stomach. So we took it at 930 in the morning. All we had was water and that shit metabolized like that. And 20 yeah, minutes came later, on real fast, real fast, real fast and furious. And then we were thinking we were going to go on a nature walk. And no, 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 no. We realized. You, you were thinking. That was your idea. Let's go on a walk through nature. Yes, and I was like, yes. going, I don't know that we want to do that. I, I think like, we want to be... I nature walk. And I remember I was seeing the condensation on a spider web. And I was like, look at this. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. And then I was thinking, like, then, all right, we took, was, an, yeah. we took an equal dose. But I, I think because you're smaller, it, you went a little further. But, like... Yeah. So when we... We, we walk, went back to... <laughs> no, no, no. You missed it. We, we walked and we went to go into that They'll get on that trail, and it was like 12 yeah. signs saying, we shoot guns here. We got yeah. guns. There's guns. Did we mention yeah. there's guns? There's, no- there's nothing here worth We're, dying over. Yeah, worth risking and, your life over, yep. yep. And we were like, all right, you know, I see maybe. those signs. Like, yep. <laughs> I hear and what they're saying. Maybe we won't be going for this nature walk because, God forbid. Yeah, so then we were, like, walking back up the hill, and we, it was like a dirt driveway. We were staying in this, uh, uh, you know, there was nobody around whatever you say that rural yeah so um and we overlook in the ocean and all that we were up in the hills and um i remember we got like halfway up the driveway and you just stopped <laughs> <laughs> and you were looking up at the clouds oh my god and your mouth was just hanging open as you were smiling you were like <gasps> it like was that. like all hitting me and I was just like oh my god and I wanted to start laughing but I didn't want to ruin your trip but I I was I was so happy for you I was like oh my god she, and I, I but I also saw I knew that you were having a good trip yeah so you were you were, <laughs> you were like you were literally tripping you were just yeah. looking at the clouds whatever yeah. the fuck they were doing and mine hadn't hit me like that yet so my whole thing was I was just trying to be a calm force to get you back to the base camp. Yes. Which was the move. It was 100% the move. Yeah. Thank God. To get- <laughs> because what I went through, <laughs> like 20 minutes after that moment, I could not have been in the middle, like when we didn't really know where we were. We were just walking like, oh, we're just looking at the flowers. Like I had my little, oh, everything is wavy gravy. And like the hills were alive with the sound of music and things were undulating. Colors were popping, like literally <laughs> like every, like the hills were moving. It was that. And then we were both lying down on these like lounge chairs. I had gotten us blankets. Remember we said the whole thing up. We're both lying there like hee hee hee, like under our blankets, just chilling out. Yeah, cracking up, laughing, having yeah. a good time. And then you, and you and were then all of a sudden, to me. Yeah, and she hit, was underneath the covers, and she just looks over. She just goes, and she has her sunglasses on, a hat on, and the covers pulled up over her nose, underneath her sunglasses. And you just go, baby. And I'm like, what? You're like, I have to ask the universe a question. And I'm like, well, it's you, it's your universe too, you know? Right. Ask the question. Yeah. And so I, then you, you, as you were asking the question. Uh-huh. I was thinking to myself, a person that's in my life that's a narcissist, I was like, they should take this shit Mm -hmm. because I think it would maybe would help them because narcissists, they can't help themselves. It's really a sad thing to watch. And then I was thinking, like, what would a narcissist on mushrooms ask the universe? And I thought in my head, the narcissist would say to the universe, what do you want to (laughs) know? And it was a dumb joke. So I start cracking up laughing. And then you ask the universe... Whatever you asked it. I don't even think I asked it a question. I just, my, there was a part of my mind, my brain, whatever, my soul, whatever, that was became open to receiving whatever it was that the universe wanted to tell me. So that's really Fucking what it was. Fucking heavy, man. It wasn't as if I was even asking a specific question like you would ask like a fortune teller or a psychic or something like that. It's just something in my brain opened up and then I received this message that said... 
you are a lonely goddess walking the earth. And from that moment on, everything changed. Oh, yeah. Like, meaning you started sobbing. I went back to I don't know how much my, you wanted to... I'll, t- I'll tell it. <laughs> I went back to my most loneliest point as a child. My parents are divorced. I had to fly back and forth over the summers to see my dad here in L.A. I grew up in Atlanta. I'm from Boston. Grew up in Atlanta. But I would fly back to see my dad, who moved out here when I was like eight, right? So I went back to that lo- like what I recall being like the loneliest moment of just dealing with the back and forth and not really having somebody there to like sort of talk to about things. Cause you know, it was like back then it was just like, go see your dad there. And there was no talking about it. How are you doing? Are you okay? I know, you know, it it must be hard. None of that stuff. So I went back to that moment as a child, I was literally holding myself as that child, comforting her, sobbing, weeping, and telling her it was going to be okay, everything was going to be fine, but that I couldn't keep coming back there. I had to move forward. I had to move on. I can't, you know, keep staying in that lonely place. And I had to embrace being the goddess that is here to lead with, like, love and empathy and fun and excitement. That was the message that I received. And meanwhile, I was laying <laughs> on... <laughs> The thing, and I was waving at the clouds, and you asked yes, me you later. Yes, waving. I looked at him. He was waving. At and you were like, "What sky. were you waving at?" And well, the clouds had all turned into like these skulls. They look like skeletons to me too. Yeah, that were kind of coming to get me, and I knew what they were. I was like, "Those are my demons. I know I have them. I'm not afraid of them." So I just was like, "Hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> good to see you again." But- and the second I waved at him, this other cloud came in. Like it was on a horse with like a fucking sword and just stabbed one and his his mouth just kept opening until it like disappeared. And then after that, I was like, fine. And um, no, I just watching all, all of your stuff. I, I told you, sort of, that's why I was joking about the misogyny. It kind of cured me of my misogyny because I've been telling you since the day I met you. Since like, the uh, day you met me. I was like, you're a goddess. I've he, been telling you that. It's true. He that's, the, that's always the compliment he gives me. And so, so I'm sitting here weeping and sobbing for my lonely child and my lonely childhood and but then I you know then the euphoria kicked in and I was like oh my god like I know what it is now like I know what it is I've been struggling with because I think about when I was a kid and I you know had so much but I would often feel so sad and I was like and I remember thinking why am I sad right now like what's making me sad and I think it was the loneliness of being a child of divorce. And even though my parents divorced when I was like two and a half, three years old, and I don't have any memories of it, I still was very lonely in my journey between them. And they never talked shit about each other. They never put me in the middle. They were very mature. I had a great relationship with my dad. We were in communication all the time. But that that journey of going from Atlanta to LA every summer, I think was very lonely for me. To leave all my friends in Atlanta and then go to LA and kind of have to make new friends or reconnect with the friends that I saw last summer that I haven't seen all year. And so much when you're a kid, so much happens in the school year, you know, you change so much. So to have to go and sort of start over every single time, I think was lonely for me. And even though I don't really have memories of all of us together, I have pictures of when I'm a baby and there's the three of us, but I don't know that life. And so there's something very lonely about that too. So to be able to finally like give it a name of the whatever it is that I've been holding on to and struggle with even in like adulthood, feeling like lonely on this journey of life or whatever, that when when that came to me, it was like, oh my God, this is what it is, you know? So yes, I was weeping and sobbing uncontrollably and you were right there with me like consoling me and you know all that other stuff and it was took you through the trip man yeah yeah it was it was it was really great i thought we really had an amazing moment you know right yeah no we did (laughs) just me no 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 i just i don't know how much you want to talk about it but yeah it was great i ain't gonna get into all it no we basically we laughed 
we mm-hmm. sobbed. We told each other we loved each other. We yes. said we were soulmates. We had yes. a great time. Because it could have gone the other way. We could have had a trip and been like, could you imagine? what the fuck have I been doing could with you? Could you imagine? Like, but we both were like inside, like saying all these things that we needed to say to each other and like loving on each other and giving each other all these compliments. And like, it was not, should we be together? I don't know. It was, we were very much... Like, yes. Yeah. And then we drove down the hill afterwards. We yeah, went, and then we, we got, came down. We got something to eat. <laughs> and then we were like staring and then at each it, other at a coffee shop. Like, what the fuck was that? that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at about one thirty two o'clock, we're just like, whoa, that really fucking happened? Like, it was honestly, I will never be the same. That was a transformative experience. And yeah, I... Yeah, the stuff that we said to each other is going gonna, gonna to remain yeah. with us. But... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the end of the night, at dusk, um, I was in my truck with the lovely Nia, and uh, Nia loves the ocean, so I just backed it up in this parking spot. We sat in the tailgate and watched people surf. It was so beautiful. It was so great. It was such a fucking amazing trip, literally and figuratively. Yeah, and then what's funny <laughs> is then the second it's, the, it's over, then we were coming down to the hills, down under the fucking 118 or the mm-hmm. 101, wherever the fuck we were. And it was like, and back into the Matrix. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, 100%. And I was kind of like, I felt a little depressed. I just feel like, you know, you get that dopamine or serotonin or whatever it is. You get that rush. You get that high. And then you kind of come down and you're just sort of like, that's why I was like, was that real? Did that happen? Was that true? No, but that's why. just like a high idiot, like just, you know. And you were like, no, it was real. But yes, we were also... <laughs> I and you know and all idiots. that stuff and idiots, but it was no. But um, what I like about them is it doesn't make me want to go and just start like I smoke a cigar and then the next day I was like I want another cigar and I got to fight smoking another one. You know, it's not like that. It's actually you come down and for me anyway, and then it's like I need to work on this part of my life. I need yeah. to work on that part of my life. Yeah, and that's and then, how I feel. And too. then it's just like all right, and then in like you know a year or so I'll take them again. I'll mm-hmm. check in on them because like I don't think. um you know, going around, like, if I, like, microdose those things and I'm just sort of, you know, everything's groovy, man, like, all the time. I don't have, like, depression. Like, I, like people, like, walk around, like, like clinically depressed or something like that. Mm-hmm. I heard it's really helpful for that. But I, I know. I've been microdosing and I find it, like, super helpful. But I don't feel like. That's what the fuck's been going on with you. <laughs> no. No, I don't feel like weird. I don't feel weird. I don't feel high. I feel incredibly clear and focused, but I also don't take it every day. I take it Monday through Thursday and then I take a break as instructed by the person who's guiding me through that type of thing. So I don't know. But for me, for me, yeah, I, I, I feel very productive on the days that I'm on it. I don't feel like not productive on the off days, but on the on days, I feel extremely productive and very like keyed in. Why are you laughing? I was just picturing you, you're actually doing like some pill version of cocaine and you're like grinding, I'm fucking getting shit done. No, uh, no, no, no. No, it's because I, I came up, I came up in the era of like, I feel like this is like a golden age of drugs mm-hmm. where like, uh, as far as like, the ones that are like illegal in a way. I mean, they made weed is now legal, but like mushrooms for the most part are still illegal, I think. Uh, so that seems to be changing, which I think is gonna be a bad thing for mushrooms because once corporations get their hands on it, like you yeah. look at weed now, I mean, those gummies and stuff with all that sugar all over them. It's like, what did you turn this into? Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. and, and I, I worry that they're gonna do that and then somehow the Monsanto will own the seed. And the they'll, who? The, Monsanto, whatever What's they're that? fucking. They were the, they're the guy that took over the whole fucking food supply. Oh. And if their seeds blew onto your farmland, they could sue you for using them because of the wind. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever listen to John Cougar Mellencamp singing about that stuff? <laughs> no, I <I've> never listened <laughs> to John Cougar Mellencamp. Wait, so anyway, he's the one that sang Jack and Diane. Yeah, and then Is the he sequel. The one goes, and the I sequel. was born in a small town. Is mm-hmm. that him too? Yep. Okay, that's a, well, there's a sequel to Jack and Diane. Yeah. What's it? What's it called? Jack and Diane and Fran. <laughs> when they open up their relationship. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because they got they got bored. They got bored with, with each, each other. other, and they tried that, and they just didn't realize that they just it was young love, and it wasn't real. Oh my God. Yeah. That's not what happened in the song. It's like a seven minute song. Yeah. <laughs> it was a B side on the forty five to uh, <laughs> Smoke and Fire, whatever that song was. Like heaven and fire, whatever that one is. I don't know. I'm not familiar with his catalog. 